couple days ago. We had the front and back two pieces stapled together. Um, this is one of the problems. It's problem 101 on page 330. Um, and the instructions ask to find the displacement of the particle. This is a particle motion problem. Uh, that's why it's got T's instead of X's. They always use T's for the independent variable of time. Uh, this is the velocity function. And it wants to know the displacement of the particle from time 1 to time 7. And it wants to know the total distance traveled of the particle. So the easy part is the displacement. Okay, I tried to help you remember that displacement, the kind of main word there in displacement is place. So where is it relative to where it started? So this is just going to be the integral of our velocity function from 1 to 7 is going to be our displacement. Okay, displacement is the easy one. Total distance is going to take a little bit more work. But displacement is the easy part. So we are going to anti-differentiate our velocity function. So t to the fourth over 4 minus 10t cubed over 3 plus 27t squared over 2 minus 18t. We're going to evaluate that from 1 to 7. These are kind of big numbers, so um, they will not give you, I seriously doubt they will give you 7 to the 4th divided by 4 on the calculator inactive part of your test. Um, so I'm okay with you using the calculator on this. Um, and guess what? That's not evenly divisible and it does not reduce. Okie dokie. Uh, 7 cubed times oops, times 10 divided by 3. Of course, it doesn't reduce. Well, 47, 27 times 49. Whew, that's just a hard. Minus, put a big set of parentheses. Okay, this was another issue on the quiz um, was sign errors. Okay, plugging in one gives us one fourth. This one's easy. Minus ten thirds plus twenty seven over two minus eighteen. So my suggestion, I'm going to try and kind of keep going without using my calculator here. Uh, at this point, instead of trying to get a common denominator with 4, 3, and 2, pair your terms together that are over 4. Pair your terms together that are over 3. Pair the ones that are over 2. Pair those together. Combine those. And then in a lot of cases, those are going to simplify. Because guess what happens when we do 2,401 over 4 minus 1 fourth? It's 2,400 over 4 which is 600. And when we do negative 3430 plus 10, because it was minus the 10 thirds, so that's negative 3420. I bet that's divisible by 3. Negative 1140. And... Let's see here, 1323 minus 27, 1323 minus 27, now gives us an even number, so that is plus 648, and negative 126 plus 18 is negative 108. And then I could do this by hand, but I'm, I really just wanted to point out that strategy of pairing your like denominators together instead of the hassle of having to find the common denominator of 12. Oh, and we'll be there.
it is zero. His displacement is zero. He ends up right back where he started. But that's not how far he traveled. He went somewhere between time one and time seven. He just ended up in the same place. So when we talk about his total distance, what we're going to have to do We are taking the integral from 1 to 7 of the absolute value of his velocity function. Now, that is not the absolute value of 0. It's not the absolute value of the integral. It's the absolute value of the velocity function. So I'm going to graph this so that we can see what his velocity function looks like. Um, so that you know why I'm doing what I'm getting ready to do. All right, I'm going to adjust my window because I'm only concerned about from time 1 to time 7. So I'm going to adjust my x's. I'm going to leave my y's the way that they are. Okay, so here is his velocity function from time 1 to time 7. So he starts off and he's accumulating error. Er, error? He's accumulating area Meaning, which direction does this particle, is this particle moving from time one to, it looks like, time three? He's moving to the right because velocity is positive, so his position function is increasing, meaning he's moving to the right or he's moving up, whichever, I, and I don't know why I think particles are these, but I call them that. So, anyways, um, and then at this time, his velocity is negative. So he's moving to the left, so pretend I'm a particle, I move to the right some amount, and then I start moving to the left a bigger amount, and then it looks like about six, I start going back this way and apparently end up where I started, but I covered a lot of distance in between. So all we've got to worry about is making this negative area positive. We've got to make this negative area positive. So what we have to do is we have to split up our integral. Okay? From 1 to, I think I said it was 3. Yeah, at 3 he crosses the axis. We can just use the velocity function. Okay? We can just use the velocity function. Um... But from 3 to 6, is that exactly 6? Let me check my table. Yeah, 6. Okay. From 3 to 6, it's negative area. So if I just stick a, well, I don't want to stick that there. Never mind. I don't want to put it there. I'm going to subtract this because it's going to be negative area. So if I subtract it, it becomes positive area. Okay. That integral would normally be negative. But I'm going to subtract it so that it becomes positive area. And then from 6 to 7, I'm good. My velocity function is above the axis, so I'm going to add that piece to it as well. Now, this is a very lengthy um, function for the velocity, so I'm not actually going to calculate those three pieces um, by hand. I chose this one because I wanted to show you when there are multiple places how you break it up. Um, so I'm just going to use my calculator. You can use your calculator to calculate the definite integral. Since I'm looking at the graph and I'm using the old one, then I'm going to do it this way uh, from the graph, 1 to 3. And it tells me that part is 5 and 1 thirds. Was that 16 thirds? And then I'm going to calculate my integral from 3 to 6, it's negative 15.75, but I'm going to subtract that. Uh, 4 times 15 is 16, so 63. Okay, okay. and then from 6 to 7, I don't know what that is. 
can convert that one to a fraction. That's something new with two thirds, roughly. Uh, I don't think I can. That's not going to give you the right answer. Okay, let's see here. It should end up giving eventually a whole number. Three, maybe a whole number. Over four plus one point four one. 31 and a half. Good enough, right? 31.5 is his total distance traveled. His displacement, he ended up right back where he started, but in total, moving between left and right directions, uh, he traveled 31.5 units. Okay? Um, so the big thing is any parts of your graph that are below the axis you got to subtract that integral because it's going to make that negative area positive. Okay, it's going to make that negative area positive. Um, and then the other parts you just calculate like normal. And you're going to add those pieces together. Okay? Alright, so.